Hello, my name is Bob Peters and welcome to Drink Order. I'm here with my very old, great friends and definitely a partner in crime, Mr. Stefan Huebner, one of my favorite people in the entire world. Thank you so much for coming and doing this. Not old friend, long time friend. Long term friend, long time, right. We're young, we're young, yeah. very young. Well, I mean, it feels like here and here, but when Not I so bend over, in the knees. right? Not it's, so much in the It's knees. my back, Yeah, knees. my back, yeah. Okay, well, let's start off um, by doing a, um, a little thing I like to do called uh, taking a shot. Oh, never done that before. Uh, so typically we do shots of tequila, and when I suggested tequila today, you said... No. Why? 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 Because Why? this is a personal selection barrel <laughs> I picked of uh, Elijah Craig 12-year that is near and dear to my heart, and we're running out of it soon, so I figure we need to... <laughs> Get it down. <laughs> Why in the world are you running out so quickly? Because uh, people are buying it. Ah, are you... 205 bottles. We're down to like 200. 200. We sold. Oh, oh, wow. So you got like five bottles left. Yeah, that's crazy. All right. Well, let's let's have a little shot. Cheers. Cheers to you. Oh, that's it's good. It's really good. good. Yeah. We are here at your beautiful brand new place. Dot dot dot. Here in Charlotte. And this place is stunning, man. I love your place. It is so beautiful. Tell me a little bit about how this came together, uh, and then we'll talk about you and me a little bit after that. Um, okay, so dot, 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 kind of started rolling about a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Conrad Hunter, an old friend of mine, uh, back in my past life when I used to be a musician, he owned a recording studio, and we met then. He did? Yeah. White room, White Room Studios, over right there off Billy Grant Parkway. A lot of great bands recorded there. Uh, a couple Grammy records which, came okay, out. Okay, which bands were? Um, uh, recorded band, band there called Newt. Uh, that was how I spent my 20s. It was a really fun way. Uh, traveling around the country, playing keyboards, uh, being ridiculous, and uh, trying to live that dream. No, you guys, am I making it up, or y'all play at the steeple? Yeah, we played at the steeple. I thought so. Yeah. Those days are a little foggy. A little foggy. A little foggy. You were behind the bar back those days. I was. Good days. Uh, so, okay, so you met Conrad at the recording studio, and then what? Um, but we met him probably 10 years after, and he was like, hey, man, you know, you're doing this bar stuff. You seem to be really good at it. He, had, he opened some wine stores, and we were like, we should, do a, we should do a cocktail bar. And this was five years ago, and I was like, it's really ahead of the curve for Charlotte. Um, you know, at the time I was just started dealing over at Heist Brewery, working with those guys and, you know, we just kind of always stayed in touch and really, I've really like, really, really like Conrad a lot. He's a really level headed. He's the perfect partner. Yeah. Um, he's so know, chill. Yeah. Like he's so calm he's so and chill yeah. and he does seem very level headed. Yeah. I, I, mean, was, that's ideal. I, was, yeah. I was working with some other partners on some other stuff and when I'm the chill even headed one, I know that's the issue. I, I'm the wild card. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so, so forward a little bit of time, about a year ago, I just get a Facebook messenger at like 3.30 in the morning from Conrad. And I'm like, he's like, I'm going to look at some spaces this week. You should come with me. Oh, nice. Okay. Give him a call. We go look at, uh, we go start talking about what we we're going to do and what kind of model. And before you know it, it's, hey, it's three days later and we're looking at spaces. Um, across the parking lot here on the backside of Park Ridge Shopping Center, uh, Eden's, our landlord, showed us this space that's going to end up becoming the guys from uh, Custom Shop's new restaurant. Right. Um, go look at it. All glass front, patio. I'm like, oh, it's a beautiful space, but it's definitely not a speakeasy. Right. Conrad goes, I don't think you guys get what we're saying. And he's like, I they want someone like that. And just points to these three doors tucked away in the corner. We don't want people to find it. They, they were, were trying to sell you the pretty spot. spot. Right. Yeah. And like this spot had never even been leased before. Right. 60 years. It was the storage unit for the shopping center. Right. 
we come in and uh, they, they were like, well, it's not really for lease. And I just gave them that everything's for lease <laughs> yeah, right. kind of look. And <laughs> I, got, about, I got money here. Yeah, like right. 30 minutes later, they finally find the key to the space. Right. Uh, walk in and I knew instantly. I was like, even though it looked like the basement of the pawn shop in Pulp Fiction, yeah. I was like, this is the spot. Cool. And a uh, little bit of vision. You know, I had a general overview of what I wanted the place to look like. Um, you know, red leather high back, sure. a wall full of booze, books. Right. Just really like sexy. beautiful. Yeah. Right. Super uh, dimly lit, like date bar. That right. was like the idea from the get-go. Um, you know, at, towards the end, uh, we had it, we pretty much did the majority of the design ourselves, And then at the end, brought uh, Elizabeth Maidash in. As our designer, she helped with like light fixtures and wallpaper and certain like things. Yeah, the it was the space was starting to look kind of man cavey, and she kind of brought the sexiness to it that we like. The the lighting is fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> the ceilings are beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the light fixtures are beautiful. The bar, of course, yeah. is gorgeous. You guys did an incredible job here, man. I'm so happy Thank you. for y'all. Yeah. Thank you. It's I mean, awesome. you know, it was a definitely a labor of love. You know, is everything we, you know, put in this summer all that hard work and all the training with my staff and everything we've done really is starting to now shine. Now sure. that the nerves are off, we've been open 10 weeks. Everything's kind of like, oh, cool. Like the systems are in place. Muscle memory's kind of kicked in. Right. Everybody's really loose now where everybody was kind of sure. tight at first. And so, you know, the, those are the exciting things. That's a stuff that I'm becoming the most proud of. I want you to tell me about this cocktail. Okay. What's going um, on here? Old fashioned. Mm -hmm. It's the one uh, I've been making the same way for almost 20 years now. Just bitters, sugars, muddled fruit, whiskey. Mm -hmm. It's how I judge a bartender. It's the club sandwich. It's the club sandwich. <laughs> That's exactly it. Um, I believe that you can judge the rest of somebody's cocktail menu based on how good their old fashioned is. What kind of uh, whiskey or bourbon do you use? That's our Elijah Craig 12 here, the okay. one we shot. Right, so this is the dot, dot, the dot barrel that you picked point. out for here that you, then you said you're almost out of it. Almost out, we got another barrel coming next week, so. Ah, there you go. Some 10 year this time, so we just like that one. I, uh, we let the staff help in and choose that one too. Right. So we're super excited. It's gonna make an amazing old fashioned, so there won't be a change. There's certain things wow, that you go. just don't mess with. Yeah, you know, we do have a fantastic uh, orange peel that we brand. I don't know if you can see that, but this is there's a brand right here on the orange peel, and it's the dot 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 brand. And you guys have yeah, a physically like a brand hot poker, poker kind yep, of and physically it's amazing, brand. so cool. And, you know, in the in the uh, culture of Instagram now, when people are taking their pictures, we want them to automatically know where they're at. It's fantastic. Yeah, I really really love like bartending. I do. You know, what's inside that glass is only part of what that experience is. Walking in to a bar, it doesn't matter if it's dot, 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 the aviary in Chicago or the Thirsty Beaver. Right. It should be some sort of experience. Right. You know, I can pour a, a shot and a beer better than pretty much anybody I know, you know? Yeah. But I go in to have the interaction and that experience. Right. And that, to me, that's the most important thing. We're going to label out. We'll label out. So I want to hear about the next cocktail that you have. Aviation? Yes. It is the first craft cocktail I ever had in my life. It was in Chicago. It was in a hotel bar. I can't remember it to save my life. What year was this, do you think? 2005. Right. You know, I, like, I don't want to, you know, the, the thing I always tell everybody, and I think it's pretty funny, it's like, I'm not better at this than anybody else is doing it. i just been doing it longer. Right. Where I saw a lot of people, especially in Charlotte, going to do bottle service or do whatever the cool thing was, I kind of saw the craft thing was going to happen. Absolutely. And I just literally like read about it, got on the internet, right. you know, studied, you know, started buying bottles of stuff I couldn't pronounce. Yeah. And like literally was like, okay, I'm going to figure out how to do this. It's incredible. I, it's incredible. Yeah. And you like, you definitely called it. Yeah. I remember very specifically. And that's why I always call you the godfather. <laughs> Yeah. Called me the grandfather once. No, no, no. <laughs> that was misquoted. That was the godfather. I'm like me that was and my godfather. <laughs> me and my walker. Okay. No, no, seriously. Absolutely. The godfather. Okay, so um, so was this your aha cocktail? 
Kind of, because it was like one of the first cocktails I ever had that did multiple things. Right. You're like, ooh, sweet, bitter, ooh, floral. Like it kind of just, right? it just kind of moved. Like old fashions are great, but they're just kind of right. That. You know, Manhattans are just that. Yeah. That cocktail was the first cocktail I ever had that like moved and like did things. And uh, for me, that was kind of that aha moment. So um, great. And you know, it's it's one of my favorites. You know, it just it hits three spots oh. and it's just done right. And it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Okay. Well, since you're finished with that one, let's talk about cocktail number three. Cocktail number three, that's our one geeky cocktail we did here. Um, every, almost everything we do here is based on classic cocktails, sure. riff of classic cocktails. It's the space. This is a very classic space. Absolutely. Classic we're decor. Not gonna, yeah, we're not going to do molecular stuff here. We're not going to do smoking gun stuff. All that stuff has a place. It just wouldn't feel right in a space like what we're doing. Yeah. Um, this is our truffled New York sour. The reason this one means so much to me is Connor and I were having the hardest time coming up with our logo. We went through thousands of dollars with companies to make us this great logo. And it all looked like it was going to be dated. Like, oh, they opened their bar in 2017. <laughs> like, typewriter font speakies. You, you know? wanted you know, something more classic to match, like, right? And, and okay. a little more elusive and a little more... Like, I'm not really sure what that is, but once you see it, you're like, oh, that's that. Like, right. like the Nike swoosh is what I always go back sure, to. Sure, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like... Iconic. No, yeah, nobody Perfectly knows... Perfectly iconic. Yeah, nobody knows that it's called the swoosh, really, but it's like, oh, it's the Nike thing. Yeah. So that was kind of the idea for what we were looking at, but we didn't know how to get there. Sure. Um, we were doing some preliminary website cocktail photos with uh, Jamie Fidelli, and I literally had a piece of cardboard and a hole punch and right. I made three dots and I had an atomizer with some port and did an egg white cocktail and just went over the top and was like shh, shh, shh. and literally did it didn't think much of it I was like oh that little edge on the side that's kind of cool uh, yes and, I get it I get yeah, it and so Jamie that's comes amazing. back like a week later and there's just down straight down shot right perfectly like blacked out everything just the white cap with the dots and I literally looked at Conrad and was like, there's our logo. That's it. And That's like, it. it was like that happy accident. And that just and so what did he also go? Oh, You're right. That's like, it. That's, he was like, that's perfect. Yeah. He goes, that's Done. exactly what, you know, <laughs> and to have that happy accident, you know, become the logo and the branding and everything right. that, you know, you do. And now it's like, oh, now we have a physical brand of it. We have a custom made sign in front of the front right. door. It's on my business card. You know, right. it's like. That's the logo that's everywhere. Yeah. And uh, so then it was like, now I got to have a drink that represents what that logo is. Okay, okay. So it better be a heavy hitter, something that had never been seen before. Right. It is a truffled New York sour. So, to, so to explain a, that. It's a whiskey-based New York sour. Okay. We use Larceny, Bulls Orange Curacao, house-made sour mix. Okay. And then truffled egg whites. But what we do is with the truffled egg whites is... How do you truffle... An egg white. That's where the science comes in. Okay, okay. Um, take a Cambro, uh -huh. glass container with a lid. We take cotton swabs, soak them in truffle oil. Throw them in there, throw the eggs in it, let them sit for about two days. Wow. And then the so truffle oil, the essence goes through the shell. Permeates the through shell. shell. And into the egg whites. And That's we, insane. And then we separate them, put them in a squeeze bottle, and we do them to order. But it's uh, really, really ridiculous. So I had this idea... I was like, I saw a truffled egg white omelet while uh -huh. Brian and I were in Iceland. Right. I was like, how do you do I that? Got, I was like, kind of like figured, <laughs> I was like, eyebrow went up. I was like, I got to figure this out. Sure. Started doing some research on stuff. I've got to try it. And uh, so you get this great nose of truffle oil. Not so much on the taste, but every time you go to the nose, it's just this great oh. New York sour. It's so delicious. And it goes back to how the aviation... This is the weird one that has four points. Yeah. You know, you have sweet, sour, boozy, earthy. Yep. Which, you know, a lot of people say that's, you know, that's almost impossible. I figure I, I found a way to do it. Sure. No, um, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. And, and the texture is amazing. amazing. Yeah, From the egg white, white, too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that's when I was like, I couldn't be the first person to have thought of this. 
And I mean, I've done nothing but Google searches and this. I couldn't find anybody else who did it. That's awesome. So that became our kind of our, our signature cocktail here that is on the molecular, kind of the goofy kind of mixology side of I think that's beautiful. Yeah. I don't think that there's anything contrived about that. Yeah. Or I think I just think it's amazing. Yeah, you know, like, at the end of the day it's a great cocktail yeah. handed to you by someone who cares. Sure. You know, and that's that's what I really think we do here uh particularly well. You know, everybody from my door guy to my my cook to my dishwasher to the people to behind the, the place. Yeah. Like this everybody is, took everything's the extra, perfect. Yeah. Everybody took the little extra effort and the attention to detail. That's great. Yeah. I know that you will have all the success in the world and you know that I love you love and you too, man. man this place is beautiful and you deserve all the success in the world. Cheers, brother. I love you. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, right there. What I want for some roasted pork and some sauerkraut and some tomato. <laughs> Only place I can get is at my mom's, and I'm like, she's like, you just come here so you can eat. I'm like, I love you too, but yeah, a meal would be great. Yeah, great. <laughs> Couple good kill bosses. Uh, no, they do uh, tomato, which is like this, like you take breadcrumbs and mix it with flour and water and make it into big balls, and then you boil them. And then you cut them. Wait, what? Oh, what is it? It's like boiled Take bread? Horse, boiled bread, basically. That sounds disgusting. No, it's f***ing ridiculous. <laughs> so you take like hard breadcrumbs. Yeah, yeah. And then like flour, egg, water mix. And then you throw the breadcrumbs in it. And so it becomes like this big mushy dough ball. And then you boil it. So it's like a boiled hush puppy? But big, like softball. <laughs>